is not able to join us today. So in his place, we have Jan Koberman, who's our chief technical officer. So we're in good hands, no worries there. Um, Jan's gonna be giving the bulk of today's presentation, but I'll just give a brief introduction if you go to the next slide for me. Yes, oops, no, there we go, the agenda. So um, I'm going to give a brief introduction about Terabee and who we are. And then Jan's going to take over and discuss uh, 3D time of flight, 3D machine vision markets and applications, and a little bit about our 3D cam. And then at the end, we'll have time for questions and answers. Throughout the presentation, you can add your questions just in the bottom corner of the screen. You'll see a Q&A section or the chat. I'll check both. Um, and if we've got time at the end, we'll try to answer some of those. Next slide, please. So Terabee is a sensor and sensing solutions company. We specialize in four main areas, uh, LED range finders, radio frequency positioning systems, thermal cameras, and of course, 3D time of flight cameras, which we will discuss today. Next slide. And those, all those areas manifest themselves as a range of products. So we have time of flight sensor modules, but then we also have some solutions in different verticals, including level monitoring, smart building, industry 4.0, and mobile robotics. Next slide. And you can see all of these products on our website, as well as additional technical information, use cases, and resellers that we work with. It's all available there, as well as ways to contact us, so don't hesitate to check it out. And that's all for me. I'll let Yan take it away. Great. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. So today I'll replace my colleague Vincenzo, who, is, uh, who had to go in an urgency to a, to a customer. So. Um, my my part, as, as Lexi said, I'm the CTO, so I'm more on the technical side of the development of the cameras. That might you might see that is a bit more technical and less on the markets, but I'll try to do my best to be uh, to balance this a bit out. So uh, first, I'll try to answer the question in a nutshell: What is 3D time of flight, and especially what does it mean for 3D time of uh, flight cameras? So I have three slides on this. In a nutshell, uh, time of flight sensing is in our case, sending out a pulse of light, uh, having it bouncing back from an object, usually we call it target, it bounces back and some of those, uh, this light comes back to the camera and the device measures the time it needs from, uh, from sending it out and coming back to the camera. This light can be a laser source, but we have also other technologies like LEDs and other types of lasers. So, um, the, the, the object, we come, come to that later, the object is, uh, is very important. So you need different kinds of, uh, you need different kinds. You need to know what your object is and to see what kind of uh, performance you will get out of, of a camera. And inside that camera, you have not only the laser, you have also a sensing unit, which is typically a CCD or a CMOS imager, which is optimized for time of flight op operation. And that's actually the one which captures the light, which you send out and since it knows um, in the same time what uh, at what time you send out the light, it can calculate the time of flight. And since we all know the time as a speed of light, uh, you can you can transfer this or you can calculate the distance to each object, um, so each object which is touched by a pixel. There are different other technolo technologies uh, for uh, 3D imaging so detection. You might some know some of them. The most common ones are structured light, it's where you project a pattern of dots, lines, or or sometimes even irregular patterns, random patterns, onto a surface. You look at that with a normal camera, and you check what distortion you see in that field of pixels. Has a disadvantage that you do not necessarily have as many pixels in distance as you have. Um, as the camera you use actually um, shows. Stereoscopic imaging, you have two cameras. It, it, it works very similar to our eyes. Um, the advantage here is uh, that it works quite well during the day. The problem is you need as, uh, an artificial light and you need, um, you need the target to be patterned or in any way 
um, in its uh, features on the target so that the two cameras, uh, two camera images can be put together and the, the parallax can be calculated by an external computer. And last but not least, you have line scanners, is where you project a line onto a target. You look at it with a standard 2D camera. You look at the deformation, and by a bit of trigonometry, you can calculate actually the shape by uh, of the target. And the disadvantage here is you have to move the target. So the time of flight features. One feature coming back uh, compared to these three other methods is. Um, a, a system like this will give you one distance per pixel, which is not something which you will have in the in the structured light or in the stereoscopic imaging system. So we have on our camera and on most 3D cameras, you have the computation of the distance on board. That means the camera delivers you uh, a matrix of uh, distances, or in some cases even the point cloud in, in, a common, in a common format, which you can afterwards use in, in, in your favorite software. Um, the measurement is independent of features on the object. So you can, even, you can even image a white wall. You will get the right distance. It works very well. That's something which, for example, for a structured, uh, sorry, with um, the stereoscopic system wouldn't work as good. It works very well in the dark these time of flight, um, the active time of flight, our systems, um, you will have some um, performance reduction if you have very strong light sources like uh, the direct sunlight and so on. You this will typically uh, result in a reduction of range, which is uh, something which you have in every time of flight camera. Uh, these time of flight cameras do not have any moving parts, so it's not a scanning system or there's no rotating mirror or anything. We achieve a resolution and accuracy which is on the millimeter level. Um, and the design of such a camera is not particularly to, uh, easy. So you'll have to take into account the entire system design to build a camera which actually uh, achieves such a performance. So also for the customer, it is very important to, to get an idea how its uh, target actually look like, what the reflection is. And as what we have down here is an, is an idea of the reflectivity of, of certain objects. You know, white office paper, 90% uh, around human skin, 50%. And I'm talking about the infrared reflectivity, which is uh, to be the typical wavelengths our cameras work in. So um, you have to make sure that when you use thermal flight camera, your light you send out, out has a chance to come back. So you cannot focus on, for example, on a mirror and expect light to come back. But uh, usually on most, um, on most targets which have uh, some um, diffuse reflection, you will get a quite, quite good performance. So I'll come now to some of the machine vision markets and applications where you can use these type of 3D cameras with higher resolutions. So in, lo in logistics, the typical applications are um, uh, tracking and measuring of parcels, all kinds of good, taking it out of, of uh, taking parcels out of boxes, putting them the right way on a conveyor belt, sorting them by size, etc. Also checking if the lid is closed in some packaging machines, you know, this counts all into these kinds of applications. And then we have a very wide field, which is in, in, in the process currently in, in, in development. Many companies are working on this kind of things. All the big robotics companies are working on this, which is a human machine interaction. So the camera helps you to identify where your robotic arm is in a relative to a human operator. So this can help you to, to avoid collisions between robotics arms and humans or help you, for example, to bring the right uh, workpiece to the user to the right position and be adaptive to, to changing situations. Other examples in the same sector are AGVs, so autonomous uh, vehicles, which bring, for example, pallets, goods, and stuff like this autonomously from one place to another in a, in a, in a factory. And here you can use these cameras for identifying uh, objects in front, so it's a, it's a typical anti-collision application, uh, but also you can use it 
for slam applications where you get your position and uh, where you get the map and the localization at the same time. Some other markets are uh, level measurement and monitoring. For example, you can imagine a big, a big storage um, area where you have goods uh, like uh, grains, um, sand. Uh, so you want to detect the surface and to get an idea of the to get a better idea of the volume you are storing in such a, such a system so the going from a single point measurement to a multi point measurement helps to get a better estimation of 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 uh, the amount of goods you have left uh, smart agriculture is another part so you can actually we we had customers doing this uh, you estimate the weight uh, of um, of livestock so pigs or cows, and you can um, you can monitor their activity. So you can say how big they are, how fast they grow, and how how well they move. And uh, another application where we're also going into the vertical in, in therapy is the present detection of people, not only in transportation, but it can also go towards uh, smart buildings, etc. So. Our current flagship product is the TeraB 3D Cam VGA. As the name says, the camera has VGA resolution. Um, well, VGA resolution to many of you, uh, it sounds like 1990s, but uh, actually VGA resolution is one of the highest res resolution you can get these days in time of flight imaging. Okay. Uh, VGA means 640 by 480 pixels, which effectively give you, gives you more than 300,000 active distance measurements per, per shot. So all these points, I need to repeat that probably, all these points are measured at the same time. So it's not a scanning system. It gives you in one shot, one distance image. Uh, the field of view of this camera is quite wide. So it's a 90 degree by 67 and a half degrees and it provides you distance data in a range of 35 centimeters up to five meters, depending on the target reflectivity. It is industrial grade. It means it, it um, achieves uh, ingress protection 65 and 67, and it has different uh, kinds of industrial outputs, um, this industrial Ethernet and RS485, and it includes an onboard calculation capability. It means we we'll give our or we, we give our customers the possibility to embed their algorithms onto the camera and use for one of the existing switching outputs to to um, do the applications. So if you have an application, for example, where you want to detect certain things or a box of a certain size, and then you want to uh, move a relay. You can do that by embedding your algorithm into the camera and connecting one of the outputs to your relay, and you have a full solution. We provide the SDK and we provide also uh, guidance on the software. Some more key specifications. Uh, the camera is, is, is of course, iSafe. It's a laser class one product, so you do not need any laser safety officers or you do not need to take any care of installing it in, um, in a protected area. It's a rugged enclosure, uh, rugged aluminum enclosure. So I mentioned already the outputs. It's very easy to install and configure. There's a, a GUI which comes with it, which uh, helps you uh, after unboxing to get uh, the first experience with the camera. You can check the different modes and, and can get accustomed to the device. The SDK, which I already mentioned, here comes in C++ and Python. It is open source and um, can work either on a remote PC or on the camera itself. Of course, we provide also all remote device management and, and software updates, which comes in the package. So uh, as I said, the rugged enclosure, it is uh, shock and vibration resistant for, for industrial use, uh, even on AGVs or, or other kind of ground vehicles. Uh, so are the connectors, so you have, a, you have a full industrial solution. What the camera delivers are actually two data streams of VGA resolution. You can see in this example here, you have on the left in color code, you have the distance. So the greener it gets, the further it's away. The yellower it gets, the closer it is. So you can see the hand going back and forth. At the same time, 
the camera delivers also um, a grayscale image, which is more comparable to a standard uh, black and white monochrome camera, except that here it is with active illumination from the laser and it works in the, in the infrared region. So this helps you uh, to replace a standard two um, RGB camera, which often gives you more data than you need. And it also gives you some uh, um, interesting information about the reflectivity of objects in the infrared, which is sometimes not what you think it is. So you can have black objects in the visible, which actually appear uh, very reflective in the near infrared. So let's see if the video works. The camera also streams um, a point cloud. You can see here on the right side is the representation in one of the viewer of a 3D representation of the point cloud. And this is also available in our GUI. Okay. Another very useful feature we provide to the customer is the quality factor. The quality factor is a factor which is calculated based on, on several internal parameters per pixel. And what it does, it gives you uh, an indication of the trustworthiness of the measurement per pixel. So you can, for example, see here on the right, we have two objects. One is uh, on top is a cylinder with less than 5% diffuse reflectivity. Below is a cylinder with more than 80% reflectivity. And you can see the images of the camera in the center. So the quality factor, the more it goes into the red, the less trustworthy is the measurement. Trustworthiness means you will have uh, an increased error, shot to shot and accuracy error, uh, the more these, these pixels actually are, uh, are in the red. Okay? This helps you to, to take decisions. For example, if you combine a 3D camera together with a standard 2D camera, or, or other kind of uh, uh, systems in case you want to build, uh, build something which, which needs to achieve a certain uh, safety standard. Some other customers' uh, benefits. So what we want with this camera, we want to enhance the industrial automation in Industry 4.0. So for that, we made it easier to integrate. We gave it a... a, a, a Quite wide field of view means you need less devices to cover a certain area. We gave it higher resolution, so you need less devices to detect certain things of a certain size, like, like a finger, for example, or hand at a certain distance. You get more reliable data and you get actually an indication of the reliability of the data. It is eye safe. It works in very well in low light, complete darkness. It also works. It, it, of course, at daylight and at, at artificial light with some uh, degradation in performance when you go into very bright, dark, uh, very bright sunlight. We have the SDK, uh, which is open to our customers, which helps you to, to push your application after development onto the camera. So you save, uh, you save money and, and you gain latency uh, when, you, when you run it directly on the camera. And also this, of course, when you have your algorithm running on the camera, you do not need to transport all your image data. It means you can also save on, on uh, networking and communication cost and complexity. You find more information on this link here. I think it was already also in the email. And now I have some time for questions and answers. Thank you, Jan. Uh, just as a reminder, I think some of you guys have found it. There is the chat and question and answer uh, boxes down at the bottom in the right hand corner. So feel free. We've got a couple minutes. We can take some questions. We do have a couple here. So I'll start with those. The first one is from Jack. I think you're sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly. I think your question might have been answered, but we'll just clarify again. Um, he says these 3D cam are these 3D cams IP certified and how do they react to dust and moisture? Okay, yes. As I said, IP35, IP65, and IP67. Um, dust and moisture, okay, it depends on the degree. We have in this in our camera separated emitter and receiver windows. That means even small, uh, small coverage 
of uh, dust moisture condensation usually uh, will not lead to a loss of detection capability because if you have a thick layer of, last, of dust on it, 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 it will degrade the performance. But you can you cannot actually identify this in the data. There are certain ways of doing this, which we can tell to our customers, obviously. And uh, you can uh, you can alarm, or um, there are even cases where you can have a, a potential cleaning system, like a pressurized air nozzle, etc., attached to it, if you have to have to work in such an environment. Mm -hmm. What of course happens if you have dust flying around, or, or bigger parts? You will detect those. So this is something which afterwards has to be uh, taken care of by the corresponding algorithms. Okay. I hope that okay. answers the question. Um, and then we have one about the pricing for the 3D CAM VGA. So I'll take that one. Um, we do pricing based on volume. So it depends kind of on your specific situation. What I recommend is um, I'll make note of your name, but also feel free to get in touch directly with our sales team. Um, and they can set up a time to talk to you and talk about your your needs and your interests and make you a quote based on based on that. So no worries there. And next up, we have a question about the operational temperature range. Uh, so the device currently is um, rated to minus 10 to plus 45 degrees Celsius. And then we have, looks like we have one, one more. Um, is the 3D uh, VGA cam GD park, GDPR compliant? Sorry. <laughs> um, well, yes, yes and no. So it depends on, on your application. Obviously, if you, as you have seen on the images, if you put somebody close to it, you will be able to recognize a person. If you look from the top down, from a certain height, like in people counting application, this might not be the case anymore. It depends, it depends on how, how you mount it. Uh, but you always have the possibility of saying, okay, I'll do my computation inside the device and the camera data is never leaving. So the image data is never leaving the camera, which is in, 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 in certain countries uh, a potential solution to the GDPR problem. Okay, great. And then we've got one more. Um, we've got a couple more. I'll see how many more we have time for. Uh, what is the computing capacity? Yes, we do have a four core um, ARM A53 or 57. I need to check that one of those two in, in, inside the device. Uh, one of those cores is taken by, by currently by the um, operating system and the um, well, the driver of the camera, but the other cores are free for, for your application. Great. And then we've got a couple questions. I think we've got time for one more. So, um, oh, <laughs> is the laser beam modulated? Are the measurements impacted in the situation where two 3D cameras are placed close to each other? So, yes, there is a potential interference between cameras. So the, the laser beam is modulated, but if you use two cameras, uh, you can have interference, except if you ask us, we'll have, we have a solution for this. It is not, it's a solution which is, we have two solutions right now. One is existing, which works up to two cameras, and another one which is under development, which works up to multiple cameras. Okay, great. Um, there are a few more questions, but I think we're just about uh, out of time. So please reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out directly to me or respond to the email that you get, um, and we'll be happy to uh, follow up with you. We are sending out an email just to thank you for coming after this webinar and then also to um, remind you about our next webinar. Jan, if you'll go to the next slide for me. So just a quick uh, moment to say that we do have another webinar coming up and that uh, it's going to be about our Terabi sensor arrays for drone, drone and robot collision, excuse me, and that will be on September 30th. Um, I think actually, sorry, we, have, we do have time for maybe one more question and it looks like I missed one. 
it says, have you tested this camera for SLAM? Yes, actually, actually we did. And uh, there are also some ideas uh, uh, how to embed SLAM into the camera. If you do have an application which requires this, contact us and, and we can get into discussion. So uh, yes, actually there are with some SLAM algorithms, the results are actually quite nice. Great. And then there's a, and one last question about um, this camera versus, for example, a 10 meter depth, 10 meter range depth camera like an Oak D light or a mode mode video mode videos too. Um, and and what would be the difference in the 3D VGA cam versus these in terms of reasons to okay. go with that I, solution? I, I do not know this particular camera. I don't know what it is based on. If it's a real time of flight or if it's one of the other principles. Often in the in the in the low price range, you have um, you find structured light or um, cameras, and there you always have to check um, how many pixels you really get, because uh, there's usually a mismatch between the cameras, which are often you know very high megapixel count, and and the resolution of the pattern you project and what you can calculate at the end out of it. So don't fall into the trap that when somebody sells you a, um, a structured light camera, that this one will give you megapixels, multi-megapixels of distance data. That is actually not true. Or it is interpolated, but well, that might not help you. So the advantage of the time of light camera is really that you get um, that you get uh, a, a direct image or distance per pixel. I have okay. a. I would need to check this one in in, in detail a, a bit better. I don't know it by heart. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if you saw the. There's a little clarification there. It says mm -hmm. 640 by 480. Did you see that? Uh, on OpenCV Oak D light. I don't know if that helps or if you don't. <laughs> if you don't know the well, solution, uh, but. And I think we are quite unique also in opening our camera to to putting the application inside the camera so that we leave the computing uh, power open to to the customer in a rugged environment. Okay. You, you can always take another camera and add a single board computer to it, but you will have a, will have a um, yeah, DIY solution at the end. Okay. And, and then, then one there. Oops, yeah, it's, yes. it's, 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 <laughs> sorry, it's the resolution, the only uh, one difference with your eight by eight distance sensor. Well, in in principle, in principle, yes. So uh, the principle is the same. It is a it is a, called an indirect time of flight system. So the technology is the same, yes. But it's more pixels, more performance, different form factor, uh, different industrial uh, grading. Great. All right, and now we are officially at the end. <laughs> Sorry about the questions that I missed. It was a great discussion. Thank you, Jan, for answering. And if any of you have follow-up questions based on questions that you ask or you think of questions later on, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we can certainly answer those uh, by email or we can set up a time to chat and discuss that. We hope to see you at our next webinar on September 30th. And thank you so much for joining and thank you, Jan, for presenting and have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.